G'day, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to talk about five misused conventions. So, lots of conventions have really good application, and some of the ones I'm talk going to talk about today also have a really good application, but are often misused. So, here I wanted to talk about five different ones that I see common mistakes with, whether it be overused or not really understanding how it's appropriately used, or the follow-up bids to it. So, let's jump straight in and talk about number five, minor wood. So let's bring it up. So what is minor wood? Minor wood's a convention which is Roman key card, except you, instead of bidding four no trumps, you bid four of a minor. Uh, so let's say you have an option like one heart, pass two clubs, pass three clubs, pass four clubs. And some people have the agreement that this says, okay, tell me how many key cards you have for clubs. So, how does minor wood be misused? Well, basically it causes a lot of misunderstandings. Any partnerships that play this need firm agreements about when it actually applies and when it doesn't. When are we just competing? When are we just setting the suit? When is it minor wood? So, most people that are here that play minor wood make mistakes with this, like, a lot of the time, <laughs> like, oh, I just wanted to show support, but you showed me key cards, and uh, yeah, I, I see this happen a lot. So, uh, minor wood is like the most misunderstood on when is it actually applying convention that I see happen all the time. Like, so many mistakes are made by people that play minor wood. Uh, that one party doesn't know when they're actually bid minor wood, which means they don't know any of the follow-up bids and the auction sort of spirals out of control at that stage when only half the people wanted to ask for key cards. And they get to either a slam or they miss a slam because they didn't know that that was actually minor wood. So if you want to play minor wood, make sure you have really, really good firm agreements about when it applies and when it doesn't apply. Because otherwise you'll uh, mess it up. Now, the other th issue that I have is that <laughs> minor wood's sort of like the expert's way of just playing Gerber, and Gerber is a convention I don't like very much at all. I think there are lots of other really good applications for slam trying, and key cards are not the only thing that you need to know about. So if you have the agreement that all four minor bids are minor wood, then you're effectively playing uh, Gerber in my, my mind as well. So th there has to be some sort of gradient of when it applies and when it doesn't um, to make sure that uh, you can bid for minor some of the times and not have it ask for key cards. And what if you just wanted to set the suit and make slam tries? How do you do that? So you really have to put a lot of work into that one. So that was number five. That was minor wood for uh, my top five misused conventions. Number four on my list is also pretty similar. This one is Roman Keycard. So, how is Roman Keycard uh, misused? So, let's have a look at an example auction. So, it might go one heart, um, and people jump the four no trumps. The good thing about uh, Roman Keycard is there's no real misunderstandings of when it applies. Most people will know what it is because it's the four no trump bid, and you get. Uh, a Roman keycard answer. So what is misused about Roman keycard? So first of all is people use it as their only uh, slam try move. Like they go, okay, I want to go to slam. All right, let's use Roman keycard. Whereas I don't think that should be the application for it. There should be other slam going moves that you can make before you actually use Roman keycard. So Roman keycard should be the last uh, step you do before you're about to bid slam and it should say I was about to bid slam But I just wanted to check that we're not missing two key cards uh, Whereas most people think that uh, Roman key card is the only way that you tell partner that you're interested in slam But it doesn't uh, elicit an appropriate response of yes I want to go to slam or not. It just checks are we missing any of this these two key cards or not? so first misuse of Roman keycard is the thought that this is our only slam going move when you should really be incorporating cube bidding and 
There, there are other conventions as well, but other sorts of ways to elicit uh, input from your partner about whether you want to go to SLAM or not. The second thing that I see people misuse keycard with is that uh, when they get a response, um, they find out they're only missing one keycard, but then they think that being off one keycard scares them out of bidding SLAM. Now that is um, not what keycard's for. You're allowed to be missing one keycard and still bid SLAM. You don't want to be missing two keycards. So if you are just missing one ace or one king, uh, of trumps, then you can happily still bid slam. But lots of people will just see this and then go, ah, oh, I'm missing one, and then stop. So that's another way that Roman keycards are uh, misused. The third way that Roman keycards misused is that people don't know to ask for the coin. So uh, this might show one or four keycards, or zero or three keycards, and you find out you're missing one keycard, but you still don't know about the Queen of Trumps. So you can ask by bidding uh, the next step that isn't the trump suit. And this would say, partner, do you have the queen of trumps? Uh, because with Roman keycard, you don't want to be off a keycard and the queen of trumps. So asking for the queen of trumps is a step that people often miss with Roman keycard. And then my final uh, issue is that people that use Roman keycard often don't know what the response is because they've rushed ahead. I don't like using Roman keycard if I can't tell if my partner's got one keycard or four keycards. And occasionally I see auctions like this where it goes uh, like five hearts past six hearts past seven hearts. And they, they miss the opportunity to ask for kings or have a more, uh, more informative sort of auction when you don't know what your partner's response is. The issue with this is sometimes um, people hesitate a lot before uh, signing off and then you've got four key cards and you're like or oh, like three key cards and was that enough and then uh, you choose to bid on firstly I try and avoid it I assume that my partner does know the difference between do I have zero or do I have three if they don't know that then they probably should have done some more informative slam bidding before it so it's not always the case that that can happen but these sorts of auctions uh, aren't great because um, I think you should actually know what uh, your partner's response is going to be. Is it zero or is it three rather than uh, trying to piece it together. So that was uh, number four on my uh, list of most misused conventions, Roman keycard. Uh, number three on my list of most misused conventions is two clubs game force opening or strong two clubs. So. Uh, what's misused about this is I feel like people use it too much. Uh, they feel like, like, for example, let's look at a hand that would have 16 high card points and a 6-5 shape or something like that, where you really, really want to be playing in game. Now, I still won't open this two clubs for a couple of reasons. Uh, firstly, if we open it at the one level, if we open just one of our long suit, this never gets passed out if we have a distributional 15, 16, 17 count. Like, seriously distributional that wants to play game opposite 0 to 5 points. So, if you open at the 1 level, the, the auction will never get passed out because the opponents have too many points um, to let you not play it. And if you're that distributional, other people will be that distributional. So yes, you might want to play in game regardless, but it doesn't mean that you have to open two clubs because like, the auction won't get passed out and it helps your partner identify what sort of hand shape you actually have when you open it at the one level and sort of what sort of point count you've actually got as well. If you open two clubs, and you're just a really distributional hand, the opponents might get in there and have an auction like two spades past four spades. And now you haven't described any of your suits at all yet, which is a big issue if you have a very distribu distributional hand. So if you have like an uh, intermediate strength distributional hand that wants to play game, open one of your suit, you can then compete, and your partner's better suited opening hands like this, uh, one at the one level rather than opening it two clubs because your partner will be doubling contracts more or they'll be trying to bid slams more 
Whereas if you open it at the one level, you'll be able to round out your shape and still get to game regardless. If you open two clubs, your partner is in a worse spot. You'll have to be doubling the opponents a lot more, or your partner will be doubling the opponents a lot more because you wouldn't have been able to describe your suits. And you, because you're distributional, the opponents are more likely to be distributional, and it's really awkward. So two clubs gets opened too much, and I find that's really awkward uh, to try and solve. So this one I put in number three in my uh, most misused conventions, just for the frequency of what when it's opened. I've, I'm a very conservative uh, two club opener. Um, I really don't want to try and stretch to put hands into it. And uh, other things that I'll look for is if I if I plan to bid three minor. Um, so if I've got an unbalanced hand with a minor, this is a really ugly way to start the auction, especially if you've got like a two suited hand with say like five clubs and a four card major, you will very often miss your, your four card major because your partner's really under the pump to try and describe their hand and the auction's sort of escalated too high. So putting two suited hands into this is also really awkward. So two clubs is overused, um, when opening at the one level would be a very practical bid. Uh, the auctions almost never get passed out at the one level if you have a pretty distributional hand. So number three on my list was the game forcing two club opening. Number two is Michael's Cubids. So um, Michael's Cubids, which is bidding the opponent's suit. So one heart, two hearts. So how is Michael's Cubids actually uh, misused is sometimes I see people use this on 5-4 distributions which I loathe. I don't want to get into the auction using uh, Michael's Cubits with 5-4s. It's really hard for your partner to respond and just overcalling a suit will be more than enough to try and do that. There are conventions that can be used on 5-4 shapes if you really want to but Michael's Cubit I dislike doing it. It escalates the auction very high and one of the benefits is your partner knows that uh, with a 5-5 shape, they can uh, bid a lot more aggressively and respond appropriately to it. So one way that I see people misusing uh, Michael's Q-bids is doing it on 5-4 uh, shapes, which I really don't like. Another way I see it is people trying to bid Michael's when it's really not. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. It might go a multi-two diamonds and you bid three diamonds. Two diamonds says nothing about diamonds, so three diamonds should not be a Michael's Qubit. Um, another example is, let's say the people are playing Precision, and you bid two clubs. Uh, one club Precision says nothing about clubs, so two clubs should be natural. So if the opponents uh, open an artificial bid that says nothing about the suit, then bidding, raising that artificial bid is not a Michael's Qubit. Another way that it's... Uh, misused is one heart double pass two hearts. Uh, this is not a Michael's Qubit either. Michael's Qubits only apply when it's the first uh, action other than pass for your side to bid. Your partner has made a double, this is not a Michael's Qubit here. So bidding the opponent's suit has lots of other meanings in different spots um, and it's not always Michael's Qubit. So this is another issue that I see with Michael's Qubits is people's recognition of when it actually applies. And then the final way that I see it misused is people not knowing how to respond properly to a Michael's Qubit. So when your partner shows a 5-5 five, five shape, if you've got really good fits, you don't need that many points before you need to jump. Most people just try and bid the suit at the lowest level, which I disagree with, where if I've got a good fit, if I've got four card support and like a singleton in what I think is their other suit, then I'll give game a shot. It doesn't really matter how many points I've got. I could have five points. These big distributional, well-fitting hands, I think it's really worth trying to push towards game. So my final reason of why uh, Michaels is in my top five misused convention is people don't actually know how to respond to it either. So number two was Michaels Cubid. Okay, and number one on my list of misused conventions, some people might not actually think this is a convention, but it kind of is, is takeout doubles. So takeout doubles get misused all the time. And one of the key ways that I see people misusing them is that it might go something like one diamond double, and they've got a doubleton in one of the unbid majors. 
So people double on hands that just that they would have opened and they don't know what they should be bidding with them. So like if they've got say 13 points and a balanced hand and they happen to have a doubleton spade, uh, they just double because they don't know what they're actually meant to do. Whereas that is not what you want to do. You can just pass on hands. Uh, there are hands that you would open that have no appropriate overcall. Don't make takeout doubles on them just because you don't know what to bid. The correct thing is typically just to pass on those. So uh, an, a mistake that I see a lot is people making takeout doubles when they've got a doubleton in an unbid major, which can cause a lot of grief and can get really, really awkward. Secondly, uh, they tend to follow it up <laughs> with when their partner bids something like a, a spade, which happens to be their Dalton, they then panic and then bid a no trump, which would then show a really strong hand, which they don't actually have. So this is a common mistake that they see, and then they try and compound it whenever it works badly. So firstly, with takeout doubles, don't make them with a Dalton or shorter in an unbid major. It'll work out really poorly. Um, unless you are intending to show one of those power doubles and show a strong hand later. The second way that uh, takeout doubles are misused are people don't know how to respond to them. When your partner makes a takeout double, they've effectively said, I have all of the suits, and you're trying to support them. So if you bid at the one level, you aren't showing a good hand. You're showing a weak hand, whereas you can jump with strength. Um, or good distribution because you're effectively supporting your partner. Whereas most people tend to just respond at the one level and it can get awkward because they might miss games because they didn't know how to respond to them. Uh, also, they might not know that uh, if you've got an invitational hand, you can bid two diamonds to say, tell me more information. Let's start a conversation. I've got an invitational or better hand. Another thing that people misuse with uh, take up doubles is that they feel like they have to have 4-4 four, four in the majors. You are not promising precisely 4 cards in every unbid major. You are showing at least 3 cards in all the unbid suits. You are not promising precisely 4 cards in the unbid majors. Partners, when responding, tend to focus on them, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to have that. You are promising that a major will be a playable spot, and for that you need at least 3 cards in that. And then the final way that I think people uh, misunderstand takeout doubles might be an auction like this, where it's gone one diamond, double, two diamonds, pass, pass, and you make another double. Understanding what the subsequent doubles actually are. And this is just still takeout, but with extra value. So if you double and then double again, it doesn't switch from I had a takeout double to I have a penalty double. It just says I had a better takeout double. Please bid on. Uh, I, I really struggle to find a spot where we make a takeout double and then it swaps to it being a penalty double without the auction escalating really, really high. So if you double and then double again, it it's still takeout, just says I've got a better hand than what you'd expect for my initial takeout double, please actually bid something. Anyway, they were my uh, top five misused conventions. Number five was Minor Wood. Number four was Roman Keycard. Number three was Two Club Game Force. Number two was Michael's Cubids. And then we finished it off with Takeout Doubles. Anyway, thanks for watching.